Hello everyone, welcome to the channel BRB Tutorial. Today I am going to discuss about the other topics of transition metal. In this video, I will discuss about the crystal field theory and the application of crystal field theory in the formation of octahedral complexes and next the reason behind the colored compounds of transition metals. So I will broadly discuss about these three topics in this video. Okay, I have already made a video on the introduction of transition metal. So this is the second part of transition metal. Now let's start. So let's start with the topic crystal field theory. This crystal field theory, it was given by the scientist whose name is Hans Bethe. Hans Bethe. Okay, this scientist has given the crystal field theory, and according to this theory, it it is based on the electrostatic force of attraction between the ligands and the metal cation. It means that during the formation of complex compound, there will be the metal ion in the center and this metal ion will be surrounded by the negatively charged ligands and in this case these are the ligands ligands means they are the electron donor and actually the complex is formed by the electrostatic attraction between the metal cation and the ligand it means that what we can say that centrally central metal atom is surrounded by the keys of ligand so if this is the metal ion it will be surrounded by the ligands from either side so if we see this metal ion what we see that the ligand the case of ligand is surrounding the metal cation so this theory is mainly concerned with the effect of environment of these ligands on the d orbital of the metal complex so mainly it deals with the effect of environment of ligand on the d orbital of the metal cation so here we will discuss about the splitting of d orbital degenerate d orbital and easy t2g orbitals everything okay so this is simply the introduction look at here this theory was proposed by hans bethe and it is an electrostatic approach regarding a complex as consisting of central metal cation surrounded by a case of anion this theory is concerned with the effect of this environment on the energy of d orbital of the central metal atom okay so now let's discuss the postulates of cft that is the crystal field theory okay the first postulate it says that the central metal atom in a complex compound is regarded as a positive ion. So what we understand, what we should know that the metal is always present in the form of cation. In a complex compound, the metal is always present in the form of cation. It means that it bears the positive charge, and its charge will be equal to the oxidation number of this metal ion. So the charge on the cation will be equal to the oxidation number of the metal ion for example we have scandium 3 plus so it indicates that scandium bears three positive charge it means that in this state scandium is in plus three oxidation state so this is the first point the central metal atom in a complex compound is regarded as positive ion having charge equal to oxidation state the next is that uh, the ligands which surround the metal cation they are considered as a point charge for example this is the metal cation so the ligand which are surrounding the metal cation they will be considered as a point charge they may be negative or they may be neutral because ligands are actually the electron donor for example here Cl minus this is the negative ligand similarly H2O this is the neutral ligand but it consists of two lone pair of electrons so water can also donate the electron to the metal cation so the second postulate says that 
the ligands are considered as the point charge that may be negative charge that may be negatively charged or neutral okay so this is the second postulate of crystal field theory and third postulate is in this way uh, in the complex compound the metal cation is present in the center of in the center of the complex and it is surrounded by the field of ligand so the minus charge or the electron donor ligand will surround the metal cation this is the third point of crystal field theory okay the next one is that uh, as you have studied uh, in BVT, that is balance bond theory, the bond is formed by the sharing of electron between the metal and between the species. So that mainly deals, BVT mainly deals with the formation of covalent bond. But this crystal field theory completely ignores uh, the formation of covalent bond it focuses on the electrostatic force of attraction that is that what it says that uh, it assumes that the during the formation of complex compound the bond between the metal cation and the ligand okay the bond between the metal cation and the ligand is completely electrostatic that is there is no any sharing or overlapping of orbitals it's simply the electrostatic force of attraction that exists between the metal cation and the ligand in a complex compound that is the next postulate of crystal field theory and <clears throat> i've already told that it says that there is only the presence of electrostatic force of attraction so there is no any orbital overlap or mixing of the electrons or sharing of electrons between the ligand and the metal cation that is the fifth postulate of crystal field theory the electrons of metal cation and ligands do not mix up or share that is there is no orbital overlap so if there is no any orbital overlap there will not occur the formation of covalent bond so what cft does is that it completely ignores the covalent force of attraction between the metal and ligand this is the next postulate of uh, crystal field theory and the next postulate is that in case of isolated metal ion isolated means it is it is not affected it is in neutral state for example this is the metal there is no charge it means it is it has zero charge so this is the isolated atom the net charge on the metal is zero in this case we are actually we are dealing with the d block elements so uh, and we are mainly focusing on the d orbital so what i want to say that if the transition metal is in isolated state isolated means it doesn't bear any charge it is free so the net charge is zero and in such case the d orbital of the transition metal will be degenerate degenerate means actually there are five orbitals actually there are five orbitals there are uh, five orbitals in d orbital so what we can say that uh, in case in all the five orbitals have equal energy in case of uh, this is the degenerate orbitals so what we can say that if the metal is in isolated state all the five d orbitals will have same energy and the energy and the d orbital in which all the five d orbitals have same energy is called degenerate orbital it means that all the five orbitals of d will have same energy and that state is known as degenerate state but that is the next postulate okay in isolated metal ion all five d orbitals have same energy and are termed as degenerate orbitals but once when ligand approaches the central metal ion during the formation of complex so let us see this is the metal in isolated state in this state all the five d orbitals should have same energy and that orbitals are known as degenerate orbital now when this metal has to form the complex then it will undergo oxidation suppose it is in mn plus state now when there is the charge on the metal ion 
of course it will be surrounded by the negative charge it means that is the field of ligand during the formation during the formation complex compound so now as the metal ion get positive charge now the ligands it means ligands are the negatively charged on neutral species neutral species also have the lone pair of electrons so actually they have negative pole so during the formation of ligand during the formation complex the ligand will approach the metal cation through its negative pole through its negative pole actually the metal possesses positive charge so the ligand will approach to the metal ion through its negative charge there is always the force of attraction between the positive and negative point so now uh, during the formation of complex compound when the ligands approach the metal cation through its negative end now in that case the electronic repulsion between the metal ion and that of ligand takes place okay for example uh, we have scan for example for example we have scandium or uh, iron like suppose iron 3d scandium yeah, 3d6 and 4s2 this is the configuration suppose iron is in plus 2 oxidation state okay if iron is in plus 2 oxidation state then the then the structure will be like this uh, this is Fe plus 2. So, although it is in plus 2 oxygen state, it has certain electrons in its dr orbital. Although it loses 2 electron in plus 2 oxygen state, iron still has 6 electron in its dr orbital. So, when the ligand will approach the iron, when the ligand will approach the iron, the negative, the, the uh, electrons of iron it means there are although they, still there are six electrons so when the ligand approaches the iron the repulsion will occur between the electron of ligand and the remaining electron of iron oh that is known as inter electronic repulsion and because of this inter electronic repulsion now this d z orbitals they will split into the two states one is easy and next one is t 2 z this is the easy and this one is t 2 z orbital so once uh, when the ligand approaches the metal cation through its negative end now the inter electronic repulsion takes place between the electron of ligand and the electron of metal cation as a result of which now the d orbital splits into two that is one is easy and next one is t2z this is known as splitting of the orbital due to the field of ligand so this is the next postulate of crystal field theory the ligands approach central metal ion with its negative end the approach cause repulsion between the electrons of metal ion and those of ligands due to this repulsive force splitting of d orbital into two sets having different energy takes place this is known as splitting of d orbital now look at here how does it occur it occurs in this way this is the five d orbitals having same energy so these orbitals are simply known as degenerate orbitals degenerate orbitals now once now when the ligand approaches these uh, metal cation through its negative end now the inter electronic repulsion takes place because of which now the d orbital will split into two different sets of orbitals that is one is e z and next one is t 2 z e z and t 2 z so look at here now these two orbitals have different energy these two orbitals have different energy one EZ is at higher energy state and t2 EZ is at lower energy state this is the next postulate of crystal field theory now next postulate is like this A splitting of d orbital under the influence of electrostatic field from ligand is called crystal field splitting and its consequences that are the heart of crystal field theory so it means that all the crystal field theory de depends 
on this uh, consequence that the splitting of d orbital so mainly we will be dealing with the splitting of d orbital in the during the formation of octahedral complex on the basis of cft and the next thing is that the energy difference the energy difference between eg and t2g so uh, as before look at here there is some energy difference the eg is at higher energy state and t2 is lower energy state and this energy difference is represented by del by the symbol del and also the effect of ligand so how much splitting will be occur yes or uh, mainly the, the effect of ligand this is the next the, the effect of ligand on the crystal field splitting mainly depends on three factors one is the number of ligand next one is orientation of ligand around the metal cation and next one is the nature of ligand so these three factors affect the crystal field splitting nature of ligand orientation of ligand and number of ligands okay these are the postulates of crystal field theory now next let's discuss about the types of d orbitals so as i have already told you that after splitting the d uh, after splitting the d orbital will uh, divides into two different sets of orbital one is t2g next one is eg so actually axial orbital eg is the axial orbital and t2g is the non-axial orbital so we can uh, draw the figure like this this is dx this is one orbital and next one is this one this is dz square so these two orbitals these are the axial d orbitals axial d orbitals and this is eg similarly now the so actually as, as i have told you that eg orbital or this eg orbital consists of two d orbitals one is dx square y square next one is dz square and the non-axial that is the t2g orbital consists of three orbitals so they can be represented in this way So uh, this is x and y axis so it can be named as d x y next one is x and z axis so it can be represented d x z next one is y and z axis so it can be represented d y z so these three orbitals are non-axial d orbitals non-axial d orbitals so these are simply the types of orbital there are two uh, axial d orbitals and three non-axial d orbitals so this is all about the crystal field theory now we will apply this theory in the formation of crystal in the on in the formation of octahedral complex now we are going to apply this theory in the first of only we have to study about the formation of octahedral complex not the tetrahedral and other complexes so let's start crystal field splitting in octahedral complex so what we can say that in during the formation of octahedral complex okay uh, the metal cation is placed as the at the center or at the origin of x y and z axis 
so suppose this is the uh, under the figure here this is the metal cation okay and it will be in the center of the complex and that will be surrounded by the ligand symmetrically so look at here i will write the ligand this is one ligand okay and then This is a ligand. Now I will also indicate the axis. So this is the x axis, y, and this one is z. Sorry, and this one is z axis. So what I have indicated here during the formation of metal complex, the uh, central metal cation is placed at the center of the complex that is at the origin of x y and z axis and the ligands are regarded to be positioned symmetrically along the axis so uh, the ligands are surrounding these metal this metal cation symmetrically now in the beginning when the metal is in isolated state when the metal is in isolated state in that case the all the d orbitals of the metal will be degenerate it means that all the five d orbitals will have the same energy so this is the degenerate orbitals and as we have already studied in the postulate of crystal field theory when the ligand approaches the metal cation through its negative end then in that case the splitting of d orbital will occur so before splitting the energy of d orbital will be raised because of the inter electron repulsion so at first uh, this is the d generate energy the first now when the ligand approaches the energy of d orbital will be raised why because of inter electron repulsion so the energy of all 5d orbitals will increase this is the d orbital having higher energy now after then now after some time now this d orbitals which are in higher energy state will split into the two sets of orbitals having different energy that is one is eg and next one is t2z so it will split in such manner Two orbitals will have higher energy state and these are named as eg orbitals and the next three orbitals will have lower energy state and these are named as t2g orbitals and the energy difference between these two orbitals is represented by delta naught so the energy difference between these two orbitals will be represented by delta naught and this uh, reason is known as center of gravity or barycenter so this is known as center of gravity or it is also known as the barycenter center so this figure represents the splitting of d orbitals in octahedral field A splitting of orbitals in octahedral field okay so 
what I have said that the metal cation is present at the center of the complex that is at the origin of the Cartesian XYZ axis and the ligand surround the metal cation symmetrically. After then the splitting of D orbital takes place in the octahedral field. So when the ligand approaches the metal cation from both ends along each of the three axes it produces the spherical so if we see the shape of this structure this metal complex it seems to be spherical and it repels because of as the ligand approaches the metal cation now the in as i have told before the repulsion between the ligand and the metal and the electron of metal cation takes place as a result of which the energy of the d orbital is raised that is shown in the figure 2 okay this is the thing now after some time now the ligand that are approaching the metal cation in a spherical manner now they will change their shape or they will con the spherical shape will convert into octahedral field as a result of which as a result of which the repulsive force on the electron in each g orbital increases so as the repulsive force increases now the d orbital get divided into the two different sets of orbital due to the, due to the repulsive energy yeah the d orbital is split into Eg and T2g, and in this case, Eg is at higher energy state, and T2 is and T2g orbitals are at lower energy state. The reason behind this is that Eg orbitals are axial orbital, and the ligands are also approaching the metal cation axially. It means through x, y, and z axis. So what we can conclude that the repulsion that occur in the e that occur, occur, occurs between the electron of ligand and the metal cation okay, that will be higher in Eg orbital than that of T2g. Why? Because the Eg orbitals are axial and the ligands are also approaching the metal cation axially so that Eg orbitals will feel more repulsion than that, than that of T2g. So the energy of Eg is higher than that of T2g. That is the reason why the energy of Eg is, is higher than T2g because Eg orbital is facing more repulsive force than that of T2g orbitals. So because of this reason, now the T orbital is split into the two. Eg have higher energy state and T2g is at lower energy state. And the difference between these energies is represented by the delta naught, or we can also write it as 10 in dq. Now, the uh, at, at first the ligands are uh, arranged spherically around the metal cation because of which the energy of all d orbitals increases because of spherical. Now, as they assume the as they assume the octahedral shape from the spherical shape, now the splitting takes place. So, splitting only takes place when it assume octahedral shape. When they are in spherical shape, the energy of all 5D orbitals has increased. But as they change the shape into the octahedral, now the splitting of D orbital takes place. Okay, so this is all about the splitting of orbital or crystal field splitting octahedral complexes. I'll look at here. Uh, in octahedral complex, the central metal cation is placed at the origin of XYZ axis of the Cartesian coordinate system and the ligands are regarded to be positioned symmetrically along the same axis as shown in the figure. Okay. Now the next thing is that splitting of D orbital octahedral can be obtained by viewing the formation of complex in two steps. First step is that I have already explained this one also. The ligand approaches the central metal ion from both ends along the three axes, producing hypothetical spherical field. Yes, because of this spherical field, the energy of D orbitals get raised. This repel all 5D. Look at it. All the 5D. You must remember this one. All the 5D orbitals of the central metal ion 
energy of this 5d orbitals raised as indicated in the figure 2 so look at here as the ligand approaches the metal cation spherically the energy of all 5d orbitals has increased okay then the ligand exert octahedral field from spherical around the metal ion this octahedral field produces a repulsive force on the electron in each of the 5d orbitals since eg orbitals are oriented axially they experience greater repulsion from this ligand than the t2g orbitals which lie between the axes due to this repulsion the energy of eg orbital increase and that of t2g orbital decrease consequently the 5d orbitals is split into two sets of orbitals having different energy okay and the further thing is that the energy difference is represented by delta naught the splitting of d orbital in eg and t2g sets of orbitals is called crystal field splitting the energy difference between the eg and t2g is measured in terms of delta naught or 10 dq or delta naught this is the crystal field splitting parameter in octahedral field a rearrangement of ligand from hypothetical spherical field to octahedral field does not alter the average energy of 5d orbital to maintain the constant barycenter it is necessary for the two easy to be repelled by 0.6 delta naught while the 3 t2g are stabilized to the 0.4 delta naught so that the total uh, increase in the energy of 2 eg orbital become equal to decrease in the 3 t2g orbital so what we can say that as the eg orbitals are destabilized they are destabilized by 0.6 delta naught each and t2g 3 t2g are stabilized by 0.4 delta naught so if we calculate the total destabilization for EZ, it will be 0.6 into 2 because EZ orbital consists of only 2 orbitals, so it will be 1 by 1.2 delta naught plus energy is increased. And the energy of T2G is decreased by 0.4, so and 0.4 this is for the T2G. Then for into how many? Uh, orbitals are present in two t2g three so it will be also equal to 1.2 minus plus is equal to zero so the net energy change is zero this is all about the application of crystal field theory in octahedral complex now next is color of transition metal complex so the main reason uh, for the color of transition metal complex is okay now let's discuss about the color so mainly the color compound are formed by the transition metal and the main reason behind it is that is known as simply dd transition so the what we can say that the color is the color compound is formed or the compound bear the color because of the transition of electron between the d orbitals so suppose we had this is the d orbital and suppose there is one electron in the d orbital this is the d generate d orbital now when the ligand approaches the metal cation uh, in octahedral field then in that case it will split into two sets of orbitals one is easy that is in higher energy state next one is t2g that is in lower energy state t2g and this is known as barycenter so now you can can you guess in which orbital will this electron will reside eg or t2g of course electron always 
tend to stay in lower energy state so it will stay in t2g orbital because the energy of t2g orbital is lower than that of the eg orbital so it will stay with the t2g orbital now the energy gap between the eg and t2g orbital it lies in the visible region the energy gap so if the electron absorb the light of visible range that have enough energy to transmit it into the eg orbital so what will happen if it absorb the energy now this electron will jump from its lower energy state to the higher energy state that is from t2g to eg orbital okay by observing uh, the light of certain wavelength having energy equal to the energy difference of this one so as the electron jump to the higher energy state we know that high that excited state is less stable that occurs only for the fraction of second so this electron will absorb the light and jump to the higher energy easy uh, higher energy state that is easier battle and as soon as it returns to its on energy state it means lower energy state now it will emit the frequency that it has absorbed so while observing we will see the light of this emitted radiation as a result of which the compound will seem to be colored so this is the mechanism the when the electron absorb the light of certain wavelength it will jump to the higher energy state and as soon as it come back to its lower energy state it will emit the light and this emitted light gives the color to the compound so actually we do not see the original color of the compound we see the complementary color so look at here in i will draw a figure uh, what we see mm, seven yeah one three four five six so if your i b z y o and r the complementary color is like this if uh, the electron absorb orange color light then we will see it as the brown red gray indigo yellow so you will see the complementary color we will not see the real color if the electron has absorbed the blue then we will see it as a orange because it will emit the orange one if it absorbs red gray green if it absorbs yellow we will see the indigo okay this is the color so, and the next thing in order to be colored the metal complex the metal ion that is present in the complex compound must have unpaired d electron suppose if the configuration is like this t0 so do you think will uh, here uh, uh, d transition is possible no since there is no electron in the d orbital simply if it has d10 electron so all the electrons are paired they are stabilized so there also will be no electronic transition so mainly the compound of uh, zinc plus plus in plus two oxidation state copper plus this these compounds don't bear color the main reason is configuration if the configuration is d0 or d10 in that case the element the complex compound or the metal uh, ion that is present in the complex compound will not give color to the compound so in order to be colored the configuration must be d1 to d9 okay this is all about the color according to the crystal field color com of complex compound arises due to the transition of electron between the easy and t2g orbitals the 
Energy difference between these two sets of D orbitals is usually suitable to absorb the light of a specific frequency from the visible region. When electron is excited from lower energy to higher energy level, consequently light of a specific frequency is absorbed for the transition and the unabsorbed light is reflected, transmitted, that is transmitted which gives rise to the color substance. It should be noted that the color of the substance which we see is complementary color of the absorbed light, not the real color. Okay, so difference in the energy level between the EG and T2G orbital vary with nature of ligand, geometry, nature of metal, oxidation state. Therefore, different complexes absorb different frequencies of light and hence appear different in color. So, this is the reason that for the formation of colored compound or how the color is generated in the complex compound okay this is all about the today next is their transition metal ion having d0 and d10 as i already mentioned before they don't form the colored compound the reason behind is that although they are they are belong to the d block they don't form because if there is no electron d d transition doesn't occur if all the electrons are paired also d d transition doesn't occur so typically they are colorless okay thank you very much for this is much for today. Our, even the Baheko video is trying to go. I am trying to publish it as soon as possible. Thank you everyone. Bye bye. Have a good day.